is covering the spread. Part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. This week in college football, we have got our first batch of college football playoff committee rankings. We have got a wild and crazy Dabo Swinney rant. We have got more Connor Stallion sideline pictures. We've got Georgia taking on a pretty fun Mizzou team. We've got Washington taking on USC. It's a good week to talk some college football. So we're going to do exactly that for today. Here on Covering the Spread, previewing week number 10 with Dr. Ed Feng, getting us reading those initial rankings from the CFP committee, talking about those key games and more for week number 10. This is Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Wednesday by Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at thepowerrank. And Ed, you're wearing a Michigan hat today i kind of thought we might get a central michigan hat uh with a fake i guess you could probably you could grow a goatee but then also the sunglasses to go full uh connor stallion so is that next week or are we too late with this being now post halloween i do envision uh, a place in my house where i display all the hats that i wear on uh covering the spread uh-huh. on the video part of this show mm-hmm. and maybe maybe central michigan is a is a reasonable one to add they were actually on tv last night you could see the snow some of which yep. made it all the way here to ann arbor um but no 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 connor stallions uh no, 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 Connor Stallions. I, I don't understand. Like, I mean, there's been pictures of this guy, right? Like kind yeah. of on the Michigan sidelines, supposedly giving signs or whatnot. Um, but no, uh, maybe central. Yeah. We'll put um, that on the power rank budget. We'll see. We'll see if we can make that happen. Talk to the powers that be over there, Ed. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll talk, talk to, to we'll the talk higher to the ups. Boss. See what you Go can fit accounting. in Yeah, you know, exactly. See what the accounting people think. See if we can expense this. I think the one issue with it is that with the 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 Central Michigan pictures, it's like hard to tell if it's him because like he kind of has, and I say this as a generic white boy, he has generic white boy face where it's kind of like he looks like a lot of guys. Um, like he just looks like a lot of dudes. Like if you're riding a bike down, you know, uh Lakeshore Path in, in Chicago, you're gonna see like six guys who look just like Connor Stallions. And that, that makes this a lot tougher. I, I kind of wish you were a bit more distinct in the way he looks, so it'd be easier to identify, hey, is it actually him or is this just a random dude on Central Michigan sideline? Right. I find it interesting that there's there's a you know, there's a piece of news that drops every single day. Yeah about uh michigan and sign stealing and connor stallions and this stuff should be random right if it were just yeah. coming out if, if we're a kind of a natural process it shouldn't come out once a day but you know we're getting yeah. stuff once a day i don't know if we've gotten anything for wednesday november 1st we're working uh, but... on it. yeah working on it um on it's it. like the like the McCarthy era stuff, which is fitting given, you know, quarterback in Michigan, the McCarthy era stuff, they would always like release this random news right before like papers had to go to publish. So they couldn't fact check it. It, it kind of like, it's not that, uh, cause like the, a lot of the reports being released here are cl- clearly fact check, but like, you know, it's kind of smart. At least at the end of the day, see what happens. People can believe it or not kind of thing. I, I get the playbook. If you're trying to, you know, push this agenda, which it's probably true, uh, but like, you know, push this stuff. I think they're going by the right approach of leaking one thing each day. For sure. And ESPN's getting clicks for it. Yahoo's yeah. getting clicks for it. Washington Post is getting clicks for it. It's and good. honestly, man, like the, all the Michigan sites are getting clicks and like reads too. That's right. <laughs> so everyone, everyone in the media industry wins because of Connor Stallions. They Everybody eats. Some, uh, yeah. We got to get some royalties. Him. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Connor Stallions, for giving us so much fun. Now, we'll talk about actual football here today, too. We're going to break in to the uh, initial CFP committee rankings, break down what that means, kind of takeaways from that. We'll talk about some really fun games this weekend with that Mizzou-Georgia game. And, of course, LSU-Alabama and Washington-USC as well. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Later on today, Tom Vecchio will break down Thursday Night Football between the Titans and the Steelers. That'll be up with Primetime Tom breaking down props for that game on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 
if your win if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting apps, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. $5 pregame money line wager required. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issue. Issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 888 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 Stop in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com, or that's actually in Wyoming. Uh, Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, last night, Ed, the College Football Playoff Committee released its first batch of rankings with Ohio State coming in at number one, followed by Georgia, then Michigan, then Florida State, and Washington, one through five. And obviously, a lot will change between now and when the playoffs are actually set. But did anything stand out to you when you actually saw the CFP committee's rankings? I actually think they're pretty good. I think it's pretty appropriate to have Ohio State at the top because they've actually played some teams and beaten Penn State, beaten Notre Dame. Those are those are pretty good football teams. Uh, Georgia, Michigan, second. Uh, they're going to get more of their tests towards the end of the season. We'll talk about Georgia in a little bit. Uh, I kind of get the feeling that they're getting going. Um, so, and, and I think they're definitely. I mean, there's a reason that they were definitively the the number one team in the nation at the beginning of the season. Michigan, I still kind of have some questions about their defense. Uh, I I don't, I'm not sure that it is great. Um, and I think it they have to prove that they're going to hold up even at Penn State. I know Penn State's offense has kind of looked terrible lately, but I still think that's a really tough test for them. And then obviously against Ohio State. I think right now Michigan should probably be lucky that they they don't have to face like an LSU uh or or even like a usc um so we'll see how that unit does and then and then we kind of get into the you know the fraud alert teams right the florida states and the the washington's of the world's florida state look they're having a great season um you know and they, they actually look pretty legitimate just by um numbers this year so success rate uh margin of victory yards per play and stuff they, they're actually the sixth best team in the nation so they, they kind of deserve to be in this conversation but we all know that they probably shouldn't have beaten Clemson back in the day. So, um, uh, and then Washington, you know, I mean, look pretty bad recently. And um, yeah, we'll talk about them in a little bit as well. I'm particularly interested in this Oregon team. I, I think I've talked about this Oregon team quite a bit, how much better their defense is going to be. Uh, like I'm making them like a 12 and a half point favor right now against USC in a couple weeks. Same against Oregon State. They probably get Washington again. Very, I mean, very easily could be in. And I think when you look at the quality of the teams, you should put Oregon ahead of Florida State and Washington. Completely understand why the committee didn't, right? I don't expect them to actually do that because they are looking at the win-loss column. And and honestly, it doesn't freaking matter at this point anyways, right? A lot of this stuff is going to figure itself out. But I'm definitely looking at Oregon. I'm, I'm really fascinated by uh, by what could, they could do. Now, Oregon is plus 165 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And Ed, I think yeah. that to me says that FanDuel is on the same page as you, where they're high in Oregon and believe right. they have a chance to make a run here because Washington is plus 155, Oregon plus 165. So I feel like even if you do agree that Oregon is in a good position, I feel like the sports books are accounting for that. Would you agree with that with them at 165? I think so. I mean, I think. I mean, right now we expect Washington and Oregon to kind of get there. I think if I did these numbers, like I have Oregon so far ahead of Washington that I would have Oregon flipped. Yeah. But I don't think it's unreasonable to have those odds for Washington. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it's it, yeah. I think I, I think that yeah, I do think the markets are generally accounting for it. I think they understand how good this Oregon team is. And they also understand that Washington is a very tough test coming up this weekend as they take yep. on um, USC. And that spread is tightened. We'll talk about that in just a bit here as we dive into the actual games for this week. Let's start things off, though, by talking about Mizzou at Georgia. Right now, Georgia is a 15 and a half point favorite with the total at 54 and a half. And Ed, Mizzou's only loss so far is to LSU. They've had pretty comfortable wins over Kentucky and South Carolina since then. Can they keep this game close enough to cover a pretty large spread against Georgia? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think they certainly have a chance to cover. I think Mizzou's had a fantastic season. We talk about them. Uh, I think their only loss is to LSU, and that was definitely a game that they were in the entire game. I, I do feel like Georgia is getting back to being Georgia after kind of the scare at Auburn. When you look at their numbers, their fifth and by justice success rate on offense. I think Carson Beck has looked pretty good recently. The numbers on defense aren't as good. They're 31st in my adjusted success rate. Bill Connolly did a little bit more of an analysis, and, and he thinks the defensive line is not really up to Georgia's standards. They're not getting uh, pressure without bringing blitzes. So it, it doesn't seem like it's quite the same Georgia defense that we normally get, but, I mean, I, I think that means they're, you know, they, they've come back to the pack a little bit, but I still think we need to respect this team you know, my numbers make it Georgia by about 11. So definitely suggesting value on Mizzou. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting in the way of, of this Georgia football team. Hopefully it's a close game and it'll be something that we get to uh, engage in and, and that'll be fun, but I, I, I'll pass on this. And there's a reason you're passing. Is that in part because Georgia does seem to be trending up? I know that they don't have Brock Bowers anymore, but last week I feel like even though they didn't have Bowers, that might have been one of their more impressive showings they've had, and they came without him. So I feel like sure. that, to me, got a lot of weight, personally. Yeah, for sure, right? And, like, all these teams have, you know, kind of different trajectories over the course of the season, right? And if you're Georgia and you're coming into the season, do you need to be amazing in September? Sure. No, probably not. You know, you're dealing with a new offensive coordinator, uh, still trying to figure things out, uh, defending back-to-back -back defending national champions, I think it makes sense to try to peak in November and December. Yeah, and it seems like they're doing exactly that. As we move into November now, uh, Georgia taking on Mizzou. Uh, Ed's numbers do show value Mizzou, but likely staying away from that one as of right now. Let's talk about LSU and Alabama, right? Right now, Alabama is a three-point favorite. Total in this game is 60 and a half. And the Alabama offense, Ed, has been up and down for sure, but they're facing LSU now. And to beat LSU, you're going to have to put up points. So how do you see this game playing out? Right. I mean, I looked at this and, you know, my numbers have Alabama by a point and a half. And you think there's value on LSU simply because, look, their defense wasn't supposed to be this bad. Right. Their 80th in my adjusted success rate. They were supposed to be a lot better. They were incredible last year on both sides of the ball. But then you look into it a little bit more and their, their secondary is just absolutely decimated with injuries. Um, uh, cornerback Zion Alexander is out. They got another cornerback that's been out with some personal issues. Um, just, I mean, just a mess back there and not exact, you know, Alabama is not exactly providing the, you know, the most, uh, intimidating pass offense, but as much as I think that LSU is probably better than their numbers have been this year, you just can't give them that kind of credit when you're missing regulars back there. I also want to give a little bit of a shout out. Like, I mean, I have Lindy's preseason magazine for college football and uh, I was looking back at it this morning and, I kind of thought that LSU's defense was going to be good just with the track record they had last year. Same recipe of bringing in a lot of transfers, impact transfers that they did last year. They were actually pretty down. And, and actually the tone of their write-up was like, yeah, I don't really think this is going to be good. They have so much to replace in the secondary. So they kind of saw this coming a little bit, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of want to bet LSU here, but I just kind of can't given uh, the mess in their secondary. Yeah, uh, the plus three is minus 105, so you are getting a decent number on the plus three. But like you said, it's probably explained by the cornerback injury. So the gap between your model and the, the market explained by injuries and injuries, yeah. especially in the secondary matter here. So I feel like staying away, probably the correct route to, to play in this game. And it's a cluster injury, too, right? I mean, you're sure. looking at multiple guys that have like top 10 number of snaps on their defense that are all right. out. 
this week. Uh, it's not good. And then, you know, LSU's offense has been amazing, but they're, they're, they're facing the number one defense when I look at adjusted success rate, which is, which is not much of a surprise, uh, you know, on Alabama's end. Right. So uh, yeah, I mean, Hey, the numbers say it's going to be a close game. I hope that's exactly what we get on Saturday night. Close and high scoring. I will take that. It's not the LSU Alabama of old, uh, but it should be fun regardless. Let's talk now about Washington on the road against USC, where right now the spread is down to three. It was three and a half yesterday, and the total is 75 and a half, Ed, minus 118 on the over for this game. And USC has definitely had its issues recently, but we know they can light up the scoreboard. So can Washington top them to keep their perfect season alive here? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the market certainly thinks so. I mean, I have this much closer to a pick and... I don't know. I mean, this is a tough game to handicap, right? Because both these teams have kind of been wretched over the last couple of weeks. And when you look at this, um, yeah, I mean, I think just for that, it's it's, it's tough. I mean, I think Washington's getting the benefit of the doubt because they are undefeated. I think this is going to be tough. I think it's going to go down to the wire. Um, you know, USC's defense has gotten a lot of flack. Uh, and I actually, after the Notre Dame game, I did an episode on my podcast where I said that they're, you know, I looked at their adjusted success rate and they were 34th in the nation, which was honestly kind of miraculous. They weren't as good by yards per play. They were 55th. And I said, hey, you know, this defense might be better. And that's looked absolutely awful in the two games since then. They're still actually only 38th in, in my adjusted success rate, which is, you know, if you just if you just say that, you know, you can be in a top 40 defense with that offense, you really like the prospects for this team. Hasn't really worked out that way. They've dropped to 71st and in yards per play they're still giving up those explosive plays whether it's the backup safety or whoever is going against them so yeah i don't know i mean i still think there's some value i'm actually a little bit bummed that i that i missed usc plus three and a half at home i'm hoping to get off this show uh as soon as possible and try to go find that number i do think there's value in there i do think this is going to be a super close game i wouldn't be surprised at all if usc wins in a shootout um and uh, it's also a lot of points, but, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of points. This is, these are two pretty good offenses. Uh, one thing I will note, uh, Washington hasn't had Jalen McMillan for the last couple of games. Uh, it, it, was, it was generally fine against Oregon, but ha has not been since. Like, their offense really hasn't been as good. How much does that injury matter? He's probably questionable again. He played a couple snaps the last couple of games, but clearly is not at the level of – where he was at the beginning of the season, which was one of the best wide receivers in, in all of college football. So I think that's a story to, to keep keep an eye on. They have two other receivers that are amazing, and they really should be fine. But I think you can actually ask the question whether, whether they need him, uh, whether they need that alpha uh, in that receiving core to to really be at full strength. Um, so I do. I, I Look, I, I would bet USC plus three as well uh, if yeah. I can't find plus three and a half but uh but but i do think there's potentially value here it is kind of one of those games that makes you want to throw up in your mouth a little bit uh we, we get these in the nfl a lot more but yeah it's been an interesting story for usc right i mean there's so much pressure that kind of comes with being the rating heisman um uh, winner right like he's kind of out caleb williams is kind of out of the heisman race and, and jalen daniels is also on a two loss team with a terrible defense and he's he's right in the heisman race uh, he's doing better than, than Williams is, at least statistically. But uh, uh, yeah, interesting season for USC. Wouldn't be surprised if they win this. The plus three and a half right now in the alt, alt market at FanDuel Sportsbook is minus 138. Uh, the plus three as the baseline is minus 112. So you could get the three and a half here, but worth noting that you're paying a pretty hefty price for it. Uh, but as always, shop around, take best betting practices in general uh, when trying to place your bets as always. What about elsewhere, Ed? Where else in week 10 you seen value for this week in college football? Yeah, I kind of want to go back to the Big 12. Um, this is, this is, uh, we're, we have Kansas State and Texas. And Kansas State is really one of those teams that you kind of forget about. I kind of, you know, I was looking at this game and my numbers found a little bit of value. And I kind of forgot that Kansas State won the Big 12 championship game last year. Like, if you remember that, like, it was kind of they, – they beat TCU. It didn't really matter because TCU still made the college football playoff. But this was a really good team, right? They brought in Adrian Martinez from Nebraska, quarterback, and, you know, Will Howard ended up playing most of the minutes last year. 
and Will Howard has been pretty good this year. Um, so yeah, so Kansas State has been pretty good on uh, the offensive side of the ball. They've actually been uh, their ninth in my adjusted success rate with Will Howard this year. That's pretty good. That's an improvement over last year. And they don't have Deuce Vaughn, who was incredible last year. They came in a lot the season with a lot of questions on defense, but they kind of held serve there. Uh, they're 24th in my adjusted success rate. So look, my numbers have this at uh, – uh, Texas winning by about three and a half points. So it suggests value in Kansas state plus four and a half. But we also have to remember, look, Texas doesn't have Quinn Ewers. They got one game with Malik Murphy and he was fine. They had about a 42.3% success rate against BYU last week. That seems pretty good compared to the college football average of about 40%. But you also have to remember BYU is like not a good pass defense. Uh, they are ranked 89th and they would be expected to give up about 42% against an average FBS team. I think there has to be at least a little bit of a downgrade because Quinn Ewers is not going to play in this game. I really like Kansas State. I think they're a solid football team, solid football program. And uh, I think there's value in uh, plus four and a half on the road here. Yeah, we talk a lot about how the gap in quarterback play in college is not as big as it is in the NFL, but Quinn Ewers is like an NFL caliber quarterback yep. and i think that that means the drop off for him is bigger than it would be for most other college quarterbacks yeah i think so i mean maybe malik murphy is great right he beat out arch manning who's supposed to be the you know the next coming of, of quarterbacks there um look you can't there, there's probably downgrade and it's probably at least a couple points so when i see that i i think i like it um actually no i know i like it and um yeah, I don't know. Isn't this like the first week in a while that I haven't been fading Kentucky? Yeah. Like my numbers actually saw some value on Kentucky this oh, week and hey. I laughed and moved on to the next game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was interesting. Like uh, very happy that uh, Tennessee was able to cover last week, but yeah. kind of horrified that Devin Leary actually played a pretty good football game. Yeah. And um, and 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 did some good things for the first time, I think, all season. So, right. Um, but, Isn't it kind of yeah. weird that you're like, you feel uneasy about a game where you took it at three and a half, you got CLV as a close at four, they won by six and you still feel a bit uneasy about it. I think that kind of says how low you might have been on Kentucky, justifiably, obviously, based on the way the results went. But like, you know, in general, I felt pretty good about it, having bet it, uh, telling you on that. And I, I understand, you know, it says how high you were on fading Kentucky when that to you felt a bit uneasy. Yeah, I don't know if uneasy is quite the right term, word. I feel like I was kind of in, I was like, wait, he's actually slinging it today. Like his numbers look pretty good. What is going on? Yeah. It actually worked out in my favor because I had a uh, Ray Davis under. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think I put that in my newsletter. Yeah, I did put that in my yeah. newsletter. So I had Ray Davis under, I don't know, 90 and a half rushing yards. So the fact that uh, Devin Leary was slinging it actually worked in my favor because they were kind of shutting off the run and then they were calling more. Uh, passes towards the end of that game because that was what was working. So, um, in some sense, I was happy. Yeah. So, I'll take it. You get, we take wins wherever we can get them, right? You can win two bets at once. Uh, I think that's always a positive for sure. So, win last week, Fred, on uh, Tennessee minus three and a half. This week, it's Kansas State plus four and a half at minus 110. And then check around two on the Washington USC game to see if you can get three and a half on USC still out there. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. Ed is back with us once again tomorrow talking NFL week number nine. Got some pretty fun games there with Dolphins uh, cheese. We've also got Bills Bengals. So pretty fun week coming up. We'll break that down tomorrow here on the show. But Ed, until then, if people want to find your numbers and your newsletter, et cetera, where can they find all that? Absolutely. My podcast is the Football Analytics Show. I had Eddie Walls on this week. He's a pro better, uh, probably mostly known for his college football stuff because he does work with right angle sports. But we also got into a pretty long discussion about NBA and how he bets the NBA and how that is both the same and different as his college football process. Uh, it will be up Wednesday night. So uh, definitely look for that the Football Analytics Show wherever you get your podcasts. And then um, also uh, check out my newsletter uh, at thepowerrank.com. I send out Five Nugget Saturday. And if you're looking for action on any given weekend, I try to give you the smartest version of that possible action. Uh, I talked about having Ray Davis uh, under 
uh, fortunate enough that that worked out. And always, you know, I've, I've been, me personally, like I've been uh, handicapping the props in there, uh, mostly NFL interceptions, but started to branch off a little bit into college football. And then I tried to get NFL college football bets from other people as well. Uh, my newsletter, you also get some of my opinions on things earlier in the week. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. And again, the podcast, the football analytics show to get that conversation with Eddie Walls. Find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find me on threads at Jim.Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Wednesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down NFL week number nine. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 